Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video where I will be doing another day in the life video. And so today I will be taking you through sunlight. So what we do for the whole day. So I decided to share everything except for my kindergartners because I'm going to be doing a whole day in the life for them. And they just don't have that much going. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing their sunlight stuff to that video. But today we are gonna be focusing on what we do for HBLC science C, language arts three, and language arts four. So we do a lot of sunlight, and so I just wanna show you how that looks, what our day looks like, where we move throughout our house, because we're kind of all over the place. And so I hope you really enjoy this little glimpse into our life. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. So before we hop into all the clips I took, for this day in the life video, I do want to say thank you again to Sunlight who sent this curriculum to me for free in exchange for my honest opinion. And so you get to see me using it in this video. So again, thanks to Sunlight for that. Now, let's hop in. So as you will see in these first set of clips, we are on our back deck and it is really sunny. I didn't really think about that when I was filming it, so I apologize if the Sun is a little bit of a glare, but again, you see kind of a real day in the life. This is what we do every morning, at least now in the fall until it gets too cold. We sit outside and do our Bible over breakfast. And so when you look at the sunlight schedule for HBLB, it has parent section and student section. So I usually read first. I'll read my section. We'll chat a little bit about it. And then I will have my kids read their sections. They have their own pink and blue Bibles and I kind of help them as they read their early reader Bibles. So we are, we're still in John, remember? Mm -hmm. And this next section, it says that Jesus connects obedience to love and asks his disciples to be unified. So we're gonna read John 14, 15 through 31. Oh yeah, okay, so it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. I like this section about the Holy Spirit. Do you guys like this section about the Holy Spirit? Well, I like this just because it's comforting to know that like even Jesus, that even if Jesus isn't here with us, the Holy Spirit lives inside us. And he helps us, right? Not only does he comfort us, but he helps us remember some of what Jesus says, which is what he's saying to his disciples in this passage. So that's the section we are reading here, but we're still in Exodus with your guys' Bibles. Can you open to Exodus 4, 1 through 17? Right here, start here. Suppose they say, the Lord didn't appear to you. Then what should I do? When he took it out, the skin was healthy again. Okay. Then the Lord said, suppose they do not believe. And then following that, the light got a little too bright, so I switched to the side where I started to read the book, talking with your kids about Jesus. I love this book. And I've talked about it in a number of videos recently where I have started kind of reading the chapter ahead and summarizing it for my kids to really have a better discussion because yes, you can read it out loud, but I feel like they would get a little lost in the weeds. So you can see us chatting through it in this clip. Don't make a mess of things. Back to six. And close the door. Back to six to 14. No, we've already done that. We have a new one. We have a new verse. Are you guys excited? I know. James 1, verse five. So if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all men generously and without reproaching, and it will be given him. So if any of you lacks wisdom, Wisdom. And then the last thing we're going to do is this book. So we are on to chapter 8. And the question for this week is, what did Jesus teach about hell? Have you ever been curious about that subject? Oh, yes. I've, been, I've heard about, I don't have it in real, but I don't know about heaven. Okay. Well, I think it's good to talk about it. I think it's good. It sounds like a scary thing, but I think understanding what the Bible says will help you feel less scared about it, right? So we're going to split this into three sections. The first is called that hell is real. So there are some skeptics out there that will often say hell is not real and it's used to kind of scare Christians into like fearfully following Jesus. Right? Because so I love the fact that I have really tied Bible to breakfast. We get a lot of our reading done and it's just some of the most important reading to me. So we get that done over breakfast and then we move into the house 
and the kids have various things going on. My son's doing math and the twins are playing nicely because it's really important for me to start with my daughter. She just needs the most help. I feel like she's the hardest to draw back into school. So I just have to take her straight from Bible breakfast into her language arts. And like I said, we are using Sunlight Language Arts level three. And I honestly just go down the schedule with her. So we are using the language arts in its entirety, which we haven't done prior to this, but I'm really enjoying it so far. So we start with spelling. And so I hand her the little whiteboard and a marker because we're at our dining room table. We are not in our school room where we do have a big whiteboard in there, but my son is doing his math on the computer in there. So we are working in the dining room and we just use our little whiteboard here. And I will read out the spelling words to her and we'll talk about them. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is spelling. So I got our board for spelling. What are your short vowel sounds? Uh, ah, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, and ah, uh. uh, right, exactly. So where you find short vowels, they, there's a little bit of a pattern. So they are usually at the beginning of a word or between consonants. Okay, so let's start some of your words. So, and remember, these actually are pretty straightforward because they're only using the, the short vowel sound and they either start with it or they're between two consonants. So let's start with your first word, fan. And the next word is sun. Uh, hmm. Good. And then bat. B uh, and then the word, excellent, have top high five. And then how about the word city? A. Good job knowing that was a, a C, because we did that last week, remember? I yeah, good job. The soft C sound. Okay, city. Sit. E and it's spelled in this case, it's spelled with a Y. Then after spelling, we move into copy work where I just read it out to her or I have her read it out loud. We talk about some of the tricky words as well as punctuation and I have her do the copy work. So it's really pretty straightforward when it comes to that creative expression section in our instructor's guide for this day. It's just the copy work. Let's do your copy work. First, let's read your copy work. Keep the lights burning, Abby. Her father called. I will, Papa, cried Abby, but the wind carried off her words. Abby watched Puffin slide out to sea. Do you remember that part? Yeah. Okay. So there's a number of variety of quotation marks. Come. Try it. While she is doing that, I'm getting her MCP phonics ready because like I said, we're using the entirety of level three. And so I am using the vocabulary, the worldly wise, as well as MCP phonics. And now MCP phonics is actually scheduled for every day and worldly wise is only once a week. So I was getting her MCP phonics ready. And then when she's done with say her copy work, I'll give her the instructions for the MCP phonics because I really like to do all the things that I need to do with her first and then she can go off and finish her either handwriting or her MCP phonics or whatever I have scheduled for her for that day. And then we move to the couch. So we definitely use our entire house to homeschool, which I love. I mean, we have a wonderful schoolroom and I do have a tour of it above, but I love the fact that we can work in other places too, because we do use the schoolroom for school. A lot of times it's a lot of the math kind of work is done in there but everything else is kind of done everywhere else, which you will see. So we are reading on the couch and it's still necessary for me to read with her, but she's just starting to take off with her reading, but I still need to sit with her and help her sound out words and stuff. So we're doing that together. We're talking through the questions and then she is done and released from her kind of language arts with me at least. So that's kind of a little glimpse into language arts three for at least this day. I do have a full week in the life of language arts three that I'll link above to just give you a little bit more of the full overview 
but this was just day one of the schedule. So following language arts with my daughter, she'll go off and finish her independent work while my son keeps working on math and I will do kindergartners. But after all of that, we transition to sunlight. So this is more of our couch subjects, if you will. So this is our history and science. History and science is happening kind of mid morning over snacks. On this day, it was still nice outside. So we went to the back deck and we were kind of snuggling up on some of our outdoor furniture and reading through history and science for HBLC. So I'll play some of those clips for you to just kind of get a feel for how we do things, how kind of very casual it is, but also very rich some of the discussions are. Dawn at the castle. So it says, so this is, do you remember last time? It was what was inside the keep. Mm -hmm. And so this says, Dawn at the castle. So a huge bell is rung to wake everybody up. So we're going to read Window on the World, and we're on to Ukraine. Do you remember anything about Ukraine that's been in the news lately? Oh, yeah. They're the ones that had the big war, right? Right. With Russia, right, right by the Black Sea. It's right here. So this is Ukraine right here. Do you guys want to go over there? Can, can you see where it might be, and we can mark it on the big map? Right there? Yep, that's the orange one. Yep. Uh, uh, most Ukrainians belong to Orthodox this churches. Is the church. That's beautiful. Look at that. It's St. Andrew's Church. Well, I think those are little crosses. I think so. We Ukrainians once had our own radical Christian groups known as the spirit wrestlers and icon fighters. They practiced a simpler Christianity without fancy buildings, paintings, or priests. Murray. doing Western Europe. You guys ready? Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, Austria, Belgium, and Netherlands, France, Germany, Monaco, Germany, are all in Western Europe. Next guys, we're going to do science. Are you guys ready? Okay, waves are made far out at sea by the wind. They sometimes travel enormous distances across the ocean before finally crashing into the seashore. It affects of the size of waves, okay. how strongly the winds blow, how far the wind has blown over the water in the sea direction. Numbers step uh, show how. The waves it's break. Number of the steps to show how the waves break on to the shore. The lower part of the water drags along the. And we ended here with my daughter and son. He was still around doing a lot of the science worksheets, and so they're getting better at filling out some of the worksheets. A lot of times I'll write it for them. It really depends on the day, but I'm kind of working on that skill. I would like my son next year when he's in fifth grade to maybe take some of the science. I'm not quite sure. I think I'm gonna work with that a little bit this year to see how it goes. But so far we really work on those activity sheets together. And then following that, I move into my son's language arts, which starts with copy work. Because for him and the Sunlight Language Arts 4, level four, I'm only doing the readers as well as the creative expression. And so you can see here he is working on his copy work and then he will go off and read his reader. Which, and I'm not quite sure if I got a clip of that or not, but that's usually what he does next is his reader. And then the final part of our sunlight day, and I leave it for over lunch, which is our read aloud. So how I do this, which I get this question of like, how do you eat if you're always reading over mealtime? I eat before, so I'm prepping the kids lunch because at this age, I'm still prepping it for them. I probably could have the big kids prep more of their lunch and stuff, but I still have five-year-olds. So I'm making their lunches and as I'm making their lunches, I tend to eat my lunch or at least half of it. And then we'll go out and we'll have lunch and they'll be eating and that's when I do the read aloud. And you can see that we are reading The Door in the Wall. We just started and it was such a good book or it is so far. At the time of filming this clip right here, 
we're like three quarters of the way done and we are really enjoying it. It has been just such a wonderful glimpse into castle life, medieval life, and it's just, it's been really fun. There too, you will be away from danger, from danger of the plague, which seems to be spreading. Do you know what plague is? Yeah. It's a sickness of some sort. It's not saying exactly what sickness, but it's a sickness and it seems like there's a current sickness that's spreading. And so she says she, you should be safe. And now it's fitting that I obey the wish of the queen to be her lady in waiting, for she is in need of my care. Today an escort will be sent for me and I shall go. John the cook, Gregory, and Dame Ellen will serve you until John the Fletcher arrives. Farewell, my son. Be brave. So first he was left by his father and then he's left by his mother. So my kids look forward to our read aloud. And if we have extra time, we'll read extra. I love putting read aloud last because it allows us to read extra if we want to, which is the subject they want to read extra in, right? Our read aloud. They're not usually asking for more history, but they will ask for more chapters of our read aloud. So I like to have that at the very end of our day. So that is really kind of a glimpse into how we do sunlight all day long. We have so many aspects of our homeschool that has shifted to sunlight and I couldn't be happier, honestly. And this is a little bit of how we do it. And so I hope that was helpful. I hope if you've been curious or thinking about potentially picking up sunlight, that this is a helpful video. I mean, I always do have an affiliate link down below that you can go through that link to get to the sunlight website if you're just curious about it. But it's also $10 off if you make your first purchase. So, I mean, it's $10. So feel free to use that link for either of those purposes. But you guys, I love sunlight. So let me know if you have any questions about our day that I shared with you or just questions in general that I could potentially help you with. So let me know. Otherwise, guys, that's what I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along with us. It was fun to film the clips and get to share them with you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. And otherwise, you guys, I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.